you the blind will see, through you the mute will sing, through you the dead will rise, through you our hearts will praise, through you the darkness flees. Let's scream, I'm free! Freedom in the Lord. I am free to live for you. And I am free to live for you. Sing it, I'm free. Through you. Through you, the blind will see. Through you, the. There's healing in his name, amen. Through you, the dead will rise. Through you, our hearts will pray. Through you, the darkness flees. Through you, my heart screams. I am screaming, I'm free. And I am free. Sing, I'm free to run. And I am free to run. I am free. Well, I am free to live for you. I am free to live for you. I am. Aren't you glad you're free this morning? Let's sing, I'm free to run. And I am free. We love you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Isn't it nice to be free? Amen. Hello, everybody. Uh, if you're a visitor, please look at the pew pocket in front of you and fill out a card so we can get some of your info. Um, we have these really cool bulletins. There's a lot of stuff in there. I'm not going to waste your time with talking about it. So if you would like to look at it, there are some importance there. I am going to remind everybody that Resurrection Sunday... Some people call it Easter is coming up. That is when Jesus was raised from the grave to eternal life, Amen. which is what we are saved unto. So without that, there's no real reason of being here. So with that, let's celebrate it. Let's use that as a segue to bring people to Christ or bring people that know Christ back to church because we're supposed to find a unified truth-teaching church, and I think we have one here. So let's invite them. And bring them. If they don't like it here, they can find somewhere they like. But let's talk to everybody about Christ and his resurrection. Amen. Today, pizza with the pastors, Mr. Jeff Matthews. Could you raise your hand so they can see you? <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, and Pastor Bill Williams are going to be in the community center directly following the service for pizza with the pastor. If you see him and you want to get to know him, you want to make jokes with him, uh, not about him. Uh, you're more than welcome to, right into, across the sidewalk at the community building, right directly after church. Um, just a good time for fellowship, get to know each other, get to ask them questions about really anything. The door's pretty well wide open. Um, but other than that, I want every one of us to have a fun, enjoyable time with our church family, because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, and enjoy the fellowship that we're designed to enjoy with the Father. All that being said, let's do some worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You can go ahead and sit down, but we're going to continue this morning in an attitude of worship as we sow into the kingdom of heaven. 
with the giving of our tithe and offering. Such an opportunity to give back to the Lord. And this morning we are blessed. We have a special singer, Mr. Danny Schaefer. And so let's give Danny a hand before he sings. I know he always blesses us. God's good. I don't know about all of you, but uh, this is kind of a question song that I need to internally ask myself the questions every once in a while to keep, keep things going right. It's called, Did Jesus Cross Your Heart? At the start of the day, do you kneel and pray, or do you go your way all alone? Don't you know there's a plan? It's all in the hands of the one at the right of the throne. Does Jesus ever cross your heart? Are you walking by yourself in the dark? your soul been saved and rescued from the grave does Jesus ever cross your heart have you given any thought to what his precious blood has bought do you wonder why he had to die you see sin has a price and he's a sinless sacrifice who paid the debt for you and I does Jesus ever cross your heart are you walking by yourself in the dark has your soul been saved and rescued from the grave does Jesus ever cross your heart does Jesus ever cross your job, Danny. Good morning. As we gather together this morning, we would like to represent the future church. And one day we, we would like not to do this. So in the meantime, we we would like to take a second offering to, to go straight to the principal so we will get the debt paid off earlier. So at this time, if you feel led to, to come and give as your heart tells you to give, you're welcome.
Praise the Lord. It's beautiful to see all of you guys coming forward to, to give. Uh, it reminds me of when they brought presents to Jesus. That's what it reminds me. Let's pray for this offering. Father God, we thank you this morning, Lord, for how wonderful you are, Lord. Thank you for the many blessings, Lord, that you bless us every day in our lives, Lord. And we give you praise, Lord, for everyone that brought you an offering, Lord, for those ones that cannot give today, Lord. We also pray for them too, Lord. We pray, Father God, that you will multiply this, Lord, to advance your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Man, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Let's stand up and move into an intimate time of worship now. We're going to just draw closer. And I want to invite you this morning, if you're in need of prayer, this is a, always an awesome opportunity to gather with a brother or sister in Christ. And if you want to come down to the front, there'll be a brother or sister in Christ who'll meet you here. Or there's always, also always an opportunity to go pray in the back where the cross is at. We have a brother and sister in Christ back there. But Let's just take some time and worship the Lord this morning. Amen. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to this morning. I love you, Lord. I love, I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice to Sweet. 
just the voices this morning. Let's just sing to him. I love, we love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to There's just something powerful about your name. We love you so much, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. You're the holy and anointed. that the Lord had told me I was worthy of been going through depression. And to be quite honest with you, I heard him, but I didn't believe him. I was being disobedient. I couldn't listen to his truth that he had for me. For the last several weeks, I have been sick, physically sick. It seemed to manifest itself on Sunday mornings and Wednesdays the most. And I couldn't quite figure out why. Sore throat, headaches, vomiting. Go to the doctor, nothing's wrong. Couldn't find anything. Last Sunday, I came in to church and go into Bill's office to pray. I didn't want to be there before I even headed to church. I was sick, 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 beyond sick. And I was like, Lord, I'm just tired. I'm tired. And he said, just be still. And I get here, and my husband and Pastor Bill and, and Curtis, they tag-teamed me. <laughs> They wouldn't leave me alone, kept trying to figure out, you know, how I was feeling. I had the opportunity to pray and release some stuff that had been going on with my mom for years that I didn't even realize was going on. And as I'm being prayed with and releasing, I got sick. My head was pounding. I kept releasing stuff and kept releasing stuff. 
And then I got this overwhelming peace over my body. And in the last week, I have not thrown up, have not had a headache. I have never felt so much freedom and so much victory in the Lord in my entire life than I have felt this last week. And I know I'm going to have struggles, but I believe what the Lord has for me. Ten years ago, I got baptized, and the Lord had given me a verse. He had given me Psalm 30, 11, and I was reading it yesterday. And it says, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put my sackcloth and clothed me in gladness. To the end of that to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give you thanks. Thanks to you forever. Well, I was reading it yesterday, and he said, you need to read the whole psalm. Okay. <laughs> and as I'm reading, my, my heart st starts pounding. And so the title of this psalm is The Blessedness of Answered Prayer. And it is, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Lord, and the Lord, I made supplication. What profit is there in my blood when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it declare your truth? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me, Lord, my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put my off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just sing this song one more time. Jesus, there's something about that name. Amen something powerful about that name and, and Vicki that was an awesome testimony and people there there is freedom through Jesus guess what he doesn't want us showing up and having to play church put a little smile on our face how's it going everything's okay when we're dying on the inside there is restoration there is redemption through the power of Jesus Let's just sing that name this morning. Jesus. Something powerful about that name, amen. Jesus. You're the holy hands, anointed.
thanks and praise, God. We thank you for your breakthrough, Lord, in our lives. We thank you for your healing and your redemption, God. And Lord, this morning we just bask and rest in your presence, your sweet, rich presence, God. Lord, we just give you all thanks and praise. forgiven because you were forsaken and I'm accepted you were condemned and I'm alive and well your spirit is within me because you died and rose again amazing love Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to honor you. Amazing love. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true, and it's my joy to all. Reconciled to God through Jesus' sacrifice when we accept what he has done for us. Therefore, as we come to the communion remembrance, we are having a banquet of reconciliation. And I'd like to preface this before we take the sacraments because I'm convicted by 1 Corinthians 11.28 that says, if we have anything that needs to be brought before God, we need to do it before we take communion. So I'd like us right now to pause for a moment, and I'll close in prayer, but take anything that's on your heart that might obstruct this reconciliation with God. Take it to the Lord right now. Father, this morning we thank you for your sacrifice, 
how immeasurable what you've done for us. Father, we know and we trust that you're right here with us this morning. Father, we see blessings. We see answers to prayer. We see people being healed. We see the Holy Spirit working. And Father, we just thank you for that at this time of communion. So Father, as we begin to partake of these sacraments, we thank you again for your sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen. And Jesus met with the disciples and he said, what I'd like you to do and what you're commanded to do each time is honor my body with this bread. And then he prayed for his broken body. Join me as we pray for the bread. Father, we, we thank you for this sacrament that we honor this morning, your broken body for us. And as we look forward to Easter, we especially thank you for the sacrifice of your body on the cross. Father, what it means to each of us, what it's meant in changed lives, we just thank you for that. And as we are commanded, now we are to partake of the bread together. So join me as we do that. Thank you for your body, Father. And then he commanded the disciples and he said, I also want you to remember the blood that was shed for you on the cross. And he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to thank God each time for my broken body and my blood before you take of these sacraments. So let's thank him right now for his blood that was shed for us. Father, we just thank you this morning as we remember your broken body, as we remember the blood that you shed for us on the cross that we might live. We just thank you for that, Father, again. And now we will partake together, and we just thank you in advance. Thank you. Join me. Thank you, David. Amen. We have one other testimony. Uh, Danny just was moved to share something with us before we. I'm not one to, to say a whole lot. I usually don't say stuff when I should and say stuff I shouldn't sometimes. But uh, uh, Sister Vicki just kind of uh, stirred it in me a while ago. And then Brother Dave uh, just kind of reaffirmed things uh, about sickness. I've, I've never been, you know, real sick. I, I used to just get whatever was going around, either once, maybe twice a year. And uh, where I used to go to, to a church over in Stillwater, uh, the pastor was, was preaching how Jesus took all that from us. And uh, I can't, I don't remember just how he worded it, but I know that it, uh, it got through my skull and got into my heart and I haven't been sick for 15 consecutive years now and he's for real so and praise the Lord praise the Lord isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord this morning amen let's release the children children you can make your way to children's church we love our children if you're new here they're going to head out this door to my right and uh, you're more than welcome if you're a visitor to go on over there with them or they can go by themselves, but they're going to have a great time and in great hands. Amen. And if you all will, let's stand up this morning and I challenge you, find somebody you either haven't seen at all before or you haven't seen in a while and shake their hand or hug their neck. Tell them you're glad they're here this morning.
of you will see Through you the dead will rise Through you our hearts will praise Through you the darkness flees Through you my heart screams I am free And I am free I'm free to run And I am free to run And I am free to dance And I am community family. It's a great day, great day to be where God's hanging out, and I believe there's two or more of us here. And uh, did anybody come in his name? Okay, how many, anybody hear me? <laughs> how many came hoping to run into the Lord today? Well, that means he's here. That's what the scripture says. It's a great day to uh, be reminded that God has a special something for you. He knows you, he knows your heart, he knows where you're at in life, he knows what your joys are, he knows what your worries are, and he says, I have the answer, I am the answer, and I'm here. And so I don't know about you, I'd like us to just kind of back up into the, the presence of God, the Word of God, and let him touch our hearts, let him touch our minds, and how many want to leave different than they came? You, if you want that, will, because he promises that. Was that a, like a one and a half backflip gainer thing? Yeah. We're going to have to get scorecards. Yeah, okay. I'm in. You did a good job. You did a good job. Well, it's uh, good to be with you all today, and it is uh, spring. Many of our young people in high school, uh, at least in this area, celebrated prom, and uh, so we'll be... Should have been praying, if you haven't already, for them before and during and after. Uh, but it's just a, it's a part of a passage uh, that is growing up. It's a part of, it's a passage of becoming. We all have that. Maybe you didn't go to prom because you're older. But even today is part of your journey into your future. Do you agree with that? Is it? By the way, I'll just give another little commercial. Remember, the interactive part of my message allows us to get out on early on, or on time. If you're quiet, I've got about six and a half hours worth of study. Uh, that's, so, yeah, it's getting shorter all every minute. I, make sure you have one of these. This is where we're going to take some notes. There's five bullet points, and I want to make sure that if you didn't bring your Bibles, you definitely have one of these because it has Scripture. If you need one, raise your hand, give away, because we'll bring you one. I know that we got three over, two over here. Uh, ushers, if you can grab a couple, we've got a few on this side if you need one. Otherwise, there's one over back here that needs one. We also have Bibles at each of the corners of the church. If you ever need one or want one, we'll make sure and put that in your hands. I have a slide that is uh, an announcement slide, and it talks about April the 27th. First of all, if you're a Facebooker, go ahead and check in, let folks know that you're uh, at church. It might stimulate some conversation at work for them to know you. You go to church? <laughs> anyway, never mind. Uh, <laughs> some of you will affirm the fact that I already knew you did that. Uh, we've got something 
I believe is exciting. We have, in the past, did a thing called the Children's Festival, did it six to seven years, and it was on our heart to, to unite other churches and denominations for one cause, and that's Jesus Christ, for the advancing of the kingdom of God. That season or that chapter passed, and we have been, I have been asking the Lord how we're to link arms with other brothers and sisters for one common goal, and that is Christ. Well, it has come now to a place where on April the 27th, that is the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday, that's the Sunday after Easter, we will be the church in action. And what we're going to do, we've already got First Christian Church, Guthrie Christian Church, the Methodist Church, I believe First Southern, no, First, First Baptist Church, which is Hershey's. There's a number of churches are going to get together. They're going to have a church service that's kind of truncated or shortened. And then at 11 o'clock that we are all going to take the streets of Guthrie and the surrounding area. We'll be going to widows' homes and parks. We're going to be going making baby blankets and, and soaps and chapsticks. We're going to be uh, wrapping up here, for instance, uh, uh, relish packs and, and silverware for uh, a ministry called uh, Hot Dogs for the Homeless. We're going to be doing, there's all kinds of things you're going to be able to sign up for. And we're going to be the church. Now, that doesn't mean everybody has to do everything. Some of you may say, hey, I want, to, I want to mow or weed eat or rake or go down, and we'll have a list where you can sign up for it. Some of you say, no, I really need to be indoors, and, and I need to be able to be uh, stationary. We'll have stuff for you all to do. But imagine what, when heaven looks down, and different denominations that believe in Jesus Christ get together for Christ's sake. There will be no t-shirts with our brand on it. It'll basically be one day, one mission. It'll be about going out and being the church. Imagine what could happen. Imagine what the lost will look over and go, what are those crazy people doing? Serving on, I thought they were all into their Sunday thing. Do you see what I'm saying? We're going to also want to reach across boundaries and maybe sweat a little bit with somebody we don't go to church with. And see what God will do. I'd ask us to start praying that God would give you and this church and this whole area his will and way to bring transformation, to begin something, to ignite something. Anybody want to have transformation where they live? Okay, six of you. I've got this second message in here that I'm going to... Let me tell you what, we got to get excited. You're like, well, wait a second. I have a routine on Sunday morning. This is changing things. Folks, this is for the Lord. Amen. And I want us to begin to pray. If you're a little sluggish in the thought, you say, Lord, am I being selfish? And just let him answer that. You know? God, I just don't want to do this. You know? Or, or I'd rather you say, God, what do you want me to do? And I'll go. I'll go. I'll be whatever you need to be. I can't do everything those young people do or whatever, but I will do something for you on that day. It's all going to wrap up about 2 o'clock. So you'll, you'll come. You'll go to church. We'll hand you sack lunches. As soon as church is over, you'll know where you're going. You're going to take it out. You're going to be on the road. You meet up with other teams, and off we go. Isn't that going to be awesome? All right. There'll be more coming, I promise. We've been looking at... The last seven words of Christ. This week it's the word victory. It is uh, part of what uh, Jesus uh, shared in his last moments here on earth. Uh, the sixth word, let, let me just push pause here. Does anybody remember back in the, when, when man landed on the moon? Does anybody, now some of you weren't born yet. And some of you, anybody remember reading it in textbooks, okay, if you weren't there? I was a young child when I remember being awakened to this lunar lander coming in and it's all fuzzy, black and white. Does anybody remember that? And it landed in what was the thing that Neil Armstrong said? The eagle? That was a huge, amazing statement because they didn't even know if man could hit the moon safely. So the eagle has landed, and then he steps out a little bit later and gets all excited and slips on the last step or something. I don't know what happened, but he, when he finally got a foot on the, on the lunar soil, what did he say? One small and one giant leap for mankind. See, there are victory statements 
throughout history, that happens, in my opinion, to be some, for that particular project, a victory statement. The eagle has landed. One small step. You know, people that uh, climb Mount Everest and accomplish great things, people who've had uh, battles that they've won, there's these great victory statements or proclamations. And that's what we're going to look at today, what I believe, though, to be the greatest statement of victory. The greatest the greatest statement of victory of all time, for all time, all of history, all of the future. And let me say this, when we understand this victory statement, when we understand its meaning, and there's no doubt in your mind what this means, it'll be transformational to your heart, and it'll be transformational to your life. Here's the victory statement. It is finished. It is finished. This wasn't some kind of quiet, low breath, barely hanging on kind of sound. It is the same thing I shared with you a week before the, the Eli, the Eli, Sabbath to me. This thing is, is it follows that. It's, it is finished. It was loud. It was a proclamation. And I believe when Jesus spoke those words, the universe shook. I believe that. It is finished. These seven words, some we can say and some we can't. The ones that we can say, Jesus gave uh, of these seven, uh, were to follow are, are, are words like the word of forgiveness. You know, where he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. He's telling us that we should do the same thing, especially the people who hurt us. The word love, it comes from the cross, and he expects us to share love, not only with our family, but with friends and even our enemies. The word of humanity, or the word I thirst, it's one of those things where, that we looked at a couple of weeks ago where we're to take care of people, whether it be spiritually, relationally, financially, physically, or emotionally. These are words we can be part of him fulfilling through us. And next week, we're even going to look at a word that's going to talk, and by the way, next week's Palm Sunday. I want to let you know that. The word of trust, when he talks about, Father, into your hands or thy hands I commit my spirit. This word trust, let me tell you what, if you've gone through a hard time, if you've had some dark days, next week you don't want to miss. Next week you won't want to miss. It's going to be a, a very powerful thing that God wants to share but then there are these words that, of the seven that, that Jesus and really only he can fulfill, like the word of assurance. Today you'll be in paradise. You'll be with me in paradise. The other one of sub, substitution, my God, my God, why thou have that forsaken me? That thing that happened there in the, uh, on the cross, only Christ can take care of it. But it is finished. Turn with me to John chapter 19. It'll be in your notes. John chapter 19, verses 28, 29, and 30 and if you would, just follow along with me as we dive in. Knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. This is the beginning of what we've been studying, and, and, and part of it. A, gar, a jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked the sponge in it, and they put a sponge on, on a stalk of hips at plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. We talked about it last week. And when he had received the drink, Jesus said... It is finished. The other three Gospels basically say, like I did, is that he shouted it out. That it was a cry of victory, not a cry of despair. And then, of course, his, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. But think about what was going on. From human eyes, the Roman soldiers looked up to this person they just had crucified, had been there for a while hanging there, and he was all bloody and all cut up. And, and they're thinking, you know what? This radicalist is finished. You know, this Jesus, or they didn't call him a Jesus freak, this, uh, this weird person, this king of the Jews is done. The, the Jesus, you know, you had the religious leaders. They thought, you know what? We finally got a hold of this radical, this troublemaker. That, you know, he's done. The disciples were even concerned as they looked with their human eyes at the cross and thought the kingdom, the dream of a kingdom had been finished. It, it was over. It's not going to happen. Even Satan, I believe, thought he had had a victory on his hand. Do you think that might have been true? It is finished, though. When that, those words came out of our Lord's mouth, heaven shook. The earth shook. The depths of hell shook. 
And, and you say, well, so what did he finish? Obviously, he finished suffering, and he finished this humiliation and this pain, but much more, and we're going to uncover that today. But his goal, the goal of Christ in John 4, 34 says this. The goal says, Jesus said, my food, in other words, my nourishment, where I get my strength, is to do what God wants. He is the one who has sent me, and I must finish the work that he's given me to do. I would write goal on the right margin next to that passage. That was Christ's goal. And so when he said it, he was finished, he was saying, not I'm finished. That's a pr big change here. Listen to what I'm saying. He didn't say I'm finished. He said it is finished. Do you, do you understand what we're saying here? It is finished. The work that was sent to do is finished. In the Greek, this word is Te tell a sty. Say that with me. Te tell a sty. To tell a sty is how you would put it together. I'm going to have you saying that with me a lot. And when you leave here today, you will say, I, I learned this weird word. You, now, if you do it at the Italian restaurant, you may get tortellini or something. But this to tell a sty is the single word for those three other, those words we say, and it's, it is finished. To tell a sty. It is finished, and it's this amazing word, and, and as we're going to look at it today as, it, like a diamond, we're going to see these different facets of this single word, word which sums up everything Christ did for you. Did you hear what I just said? Everything he did for you at the cross, what he accomplished, it is finished. What does it mean? The word tetelestai has, I believe, six different ways in the ancient Greek to look at it. First, it's an artist-type term, or uh, it's an artist when they're completing a painting or a portrait. It, it, when they get to the very end and that very last brush stroke and they stand back and they say, you know, fine, or it, it is finished, they say tetelestai. Say that with me, tetelestai. We're going to do this little thing just because it's going to, we're going to build to something, all right? It meant the picture is perfect. It's complete. When Jesus was dying on the cross, he, has, he was saying, the picture is perfect. I've done the last stroke. Every detail has been perfectly pinned. The next thing is like a servant. And the servant would use the word to telestai, when he, and it made a little something different. It's when you'd come and you would report into your, your master and you'd finish this work or your duties of the day and you would say, to telestai. You would say, the work's been completed. I finished the job. I'm done. To telestai. Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, I've completed the work. There's a number of other facets we need to look at as it relates to what happened. The first one in there is your first fill in the blank. He fulfilled the scripture. It is finished. When he says those words, he is fulfilling the scripture. Remember last week I shared with you over 380 prophecies in the Old Testament. Over a thousands of years were penned foretelling the Messiah. And he, he said, I want to make sure and let you know what, what I will look like, what things will have happened, the, the things that will have to come about so that you know it's truly me. And he made promises and he made prophecies. And God says, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send a Messiah. I'm going to die for your sins. I'm going to pave the way to, to remove this, re, re, this, this sacrificial system that is really going to go away. It doesn't work. And I'm going to fulfill them, the prophecies. I'm going to paint this picture completely. So when Jesus finished suffering, so when all the prophetic prophecies and things were fulfilled, every single one of them, and he's up there and he's finished this picture and he's saying the job is done and, and all everything's done, he says what? To tell us die. Say that with me. To tell us. I just want you to, you know, you might start using this with your kids. Kids come up, mom and dad, to tell us die. You're going to say, what? Anyway, but he died. Right? He died. Luke 24, 44 says, Amazing things. Well, let me give you kind of a, a setup to Luke 24, 44. The backdrop. The story is after he's been risen. See, he had been buried in the tomb for three days. Then he comes back and he, he begins to have appearances for the in that next 40-day period. And, and even a couple of disciples he ran into didn't even recognize him in his resurrected body. So pick up with me in Luke chapter 24, verse 44. It starts here. Jesus said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. 
I circled for me about me because you know what? You'll never really find Jesus' name in the Old Testament, but he says it's all about me. Jesus says all the law. You know, you have Moses, you, you've got the law of Moses, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers and Deuteronomy. It's all about me. And then he looks at the prophets. He said, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and Hosea and Joel and Amos and Obadiah and Jonah and Micah and Nahum. It's all about me. All the songs, all about me. He says, let me explain it to you, though. So it picks up in verse 45. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scripture. He told them, this is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning in Jerusalem. Jesus fulfilled scripture. The second thing Jesus did, and we find this word to telestai, has another application. See, to telestai is another place it was used in the judicial system. The judicial system is when a prisoner had served his time and paid his debt and, and, and made restitution. The judge would come out. And I don't know if they had a stamp. They probably had a, a press or something. with you know. But he would put on there, tetelestai, that you've done your duty. It meant justice has been served. It's finished. You've served your time. You've done all you needed to do. So the second thing is Jesus satisfied the law. He, number two, satisfied the law when he said it's finished. Justice had been served. What was the law requiring? What does the law require? You know, he said, I've, I've met all of its needs. It required for the penalty of sin was death. He said, I paid that price. Romans chapter 8, verse 3, the very first few words says this. The law of Moses could not save us. The law could not save us, if you shorten that, because of their sinful nature. See, you've got this fact, this truth that nobody get saved by being good enough. Did you know that? Nobody gets saved by keeping the Ten Commandments. Nobody ever gets the salvation of an eternal life with Jesus or with our Lord by obeying all the rules. Romans 8 continues on in, into 3 here, but God put into effect a different plan to save us. He sent his own son in a human body like ours, except that ours is sinful. God destroyed sin's control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He, and he did this so that the requirement of the law would be fully accomplished for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. No one has ever kept the law except for Christ. He was the only one. He, he met every single one. And he, you know what? He saved us, not though by the law. He saved us by what? He did through the blood of the Lamb. Colossians 2.14 says he canceled the record that contained the charges against us. He took it and destroyed it by what? Nailing it on the cross. So here's the question. Here's the question. Wouldn't it be nice to get one of those phone calls from Visa on Monday morning or from Discover or America? And they just call up and they're saying, Mr. Williams, now I would just be elated, but anyway, maybe you wouldn't, but I... Mr. Mr. Williams, we just wanted to call and let you know all debt has been eliminated. We're just wiping it clean. You get to start over fresh. How many would like that? Six of you again. Man, I tell you, I'm going to have to find the rest of my notes here. Uh, it would be an awesome thing to have it eliminated. And, 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 and that's exactly what Jesus did on the cross. We've checked your account. It's outstanding. But Christ has come and paid it. It's clear. It's clear. I've wiped the record clean. But when you put your trust in Christ, when you've accepted him and you're going to heaven and you get before God and you say, God, you know, I, 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 I want to talk to you about that sin. You know, you know that sin, Lord, you know that little lie that I said? And go, he, he's going to say, what lie? Okay. You, know, well, well, God, you know, that unfaithful thing I was doing, Lord, you know, that, what unfaithfulness, he's going to say. He's going to say, well, what about that, that, that problem or that addiction? He's going to say, what are you talking about? If you're under the blood of the Lamb, it's paid for. Who paid for it? Jesus did. The Telestai. 
There's no record. It's been forgotten. Romans 10, 4 says this. Jesus ended the law so that no one who believes in him may be right with God. It's saying the good news, this thing that is paid for, it's, he said the law is taken care of. Now, wait a second. Pastor, you tell me we don't have to obey the law anymore? woo I knew that that speed limit sign wasn't for me. That's not what we're talking about. See, there were three laws. There were three laws that he spoke to, and he took care of two of the three. There was the legal law of the nation of Israel. There was the moral law, which applied. It was the Ten Commandments. And there was the ceremonial law, which you find in the sacrificial system where the priests and religion, you know, in Leviticus, there's quite a bit of explanation. What Jesus ended was not the moral law. What he ended was the ceremonial and legal law. Do you see what I'm saying? Some, of, some people get that all kind of messed up and forget about that. And I love what the message says. It sums up everything that I'm talking here. Romans 5.18 in the message paraphrase. He says, here it is in a nutshell. Just as one person did it wrong, and he's talking about the first Adam, you know, Adam, Eve, Garden of Eden, and got us all into trouble with sin and debt, another person did it right and got us out of it. He's talking about the second Adam or Jesus. He got us out of it. But he got us into what? life. It's not just getting out of trouble, it's getting into something bigger than yourself, and that's life. So he says, it is finished. I've painted the picture. I've fulfilled the law. I've satisfied, and I've dealt with that in such a great way. The next word, Greek word, that you, the tetelestai is used for is really, there's a sacrificial term and a business term. It's kind of got two elements, two aspects. See, when priests under the sacrificial system, had to make a sacrifice for sin, right? Aren't you glad you didn't drag a goat or a lamb up here, you know, today? And out there, you got, you know, Jeff out there trying to sing and encourage everybody while, while Jeffrey's over there slitting throats and burning stuff. <laughs> Woo, baby, throw one on here now. Like that medium rare? No, he wasn't doing that. Aren't you glad, though, that we didn't have to do that? But if we had, it ha would have to be a spotless lamb. And the, and the priest would say, well, let me, as soon as they would find one, they would say, Tetelestai, we found one, right? It's, in, or in a business sense, if you went to pay a bill and, and, and you, the bill was paid, they would write on here like paid in full, Tetelestai, paid in full. So the third thing, this is your third fill in the blank, that Jesus came to do is to pay your penalty. I know you've heard, let me just say, if you've been coming to church very long, you've, you've heard this story, and you're like, Pastor, this is the sixth week. You're talking about the great news, the good news. You're, you, you know, you're hung up in this, this seven word. Let me tell you what, it's that important. Because you're to go out from here, and I'm trying to have you look at it from this way and this way. I want it to be tilled into your soil like a garden, and then you let the Lord spring forth the fruit that you're supposed to give to the people out there. This isn't your fruit, unless you haven't accepted the Lord or have never heard this. This is to put into you the seeds of life so that when we go out there and be the church, church you've got enough in you and understanding that others can taste and see the Lord is good. Amen? Colossians 1.14 says, God said, or excuse me, God's son paid the price to free us, which means that our sins are forgiven. He paid for all of them, it says. Now, when you go and write a, how many of you remember the, 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 your electric bill from three years ago that you paid? That, a month, just one month. Anybody remember writing that check and how much it was? The only ones you remember are the ones that were extra, extraordinarily high, Right? But when we pay something, it's forgotten. And God says, when, when, when I sent my son and I died for your sin, he paid for all of them. To tell us die. Hebrews 7, 27. He sacrificed for their sins once. I would circle that. Last I checked, God didn't have to climb up on the cross every time I did something wrong again and again. Oh, I messed up. He climbed. I got to get up there again. Die again for Pastor Bill. Man, he's there. He's blowing it again. How many of y'all know I blow it? How many of you all blow it with me? See, we're brothers and sisters. God didn't have to get back up on the cross. He did it, he said, once and for all when he offered himself. Hebrews 10, 18 says, Now that the sin has been forgiven, there is no need to offer any more sacrifices. This is a big verse. You say, well, pastor, I, don't, I didn't bring a lamb or a cow. or a, I didn't do that. Let me tell you what, we get hung up in trying to 
sacrifice for the Lord for his favor, for his, for his you know, okayness. And, and lo- I, I just want him to love me, so I got I to gotta do stuff good. Let me just tell you something. It's finished. The sacrificial system that was in place in the old covenant is gone. And when I was in Israel traveling, it's hard to believe, but there are people reconstructing a temple today. They're building furniture and out of gold, and they're all proud and because they believe they've got to have the temple kind of re-erected before Christ, can, the Messiah, their first time in their mind, will come back. They're missing it. But just as confusing as that sounds, Many of us are saying, you know, I know I came down and I believed and professed with him. I believe in my heart, professed with my mouth that he was Lord. And I know he saved me, but every week I have to do something for him because I don't want him to not like me anymore. I, I got to work harder. I, I've got to, I've got to, you know, I've, because I need to pray more. I, I need to come to church more. I, I, now, I will tell you, if you work in the nursery, it does pay for sin, but no, no. <laughs> No, 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 no. But you know what? It's just like those people in Israel trying to build, reconstruct a temple so God will come. He's come. He has saved you. It's done. It's finished. Real quick story. I read about an elderly lady who was talking to her life, life insurance agent. She walked in and she said, I'm so sorry. I keep paying the I can't pay this month's life insurance premium. My husband died five years ago, and I just don't have the funds any longer. She was distraught. distraught. And the insurance lady says, ma'am, you don't understand. The moment your husband died, the policy was paid in full. You now receive. You don't have to keep paying on it. You don't have to keep sacrificing for it. It's paid in full. Now you get the benefit of it. You don't have to pay anymore. It's been paid up. The policy's paid in full. That's how we're to live. It is finished. Say it with me. It is finished. If you're in the Greek, it's what? To tell us die. The telestai, important, important word. So, Jesus fulfilled the scripture. It's finished. It's what? Jesus satisfies the justice and the law. He, he, he satisfied all that, right? It is what? He paid the penalty for everything. What was that? It's finished. But there's one that I really like that we haven't looked at. The telestai was a battle cry. To telestai was when there was a, a, a victory in a, in a battle or a wrestling match or a competition. It was when you defeated. It's when you overcame the enemy. It was the victor when he would say, to telestai. Woohoo! We'd say something like, thunder up. I don't know what we would say. It's over. It's the battle cry of the ages. So the fourth thing, there are actually two implications about this victory chant, and it's number four is one half and number five is the other. The first implication, first the fill-in on verse four, he conquered sin and death. To tell us die, sin and death. He broke this grip of the fear of death, the, the p- grip of sin, the power over us. He, he, we shout out, it's done, it's finished. I bet you some of us in here have some things to shout about. Do you know there were victory of, that God has placed in your life? Would you want to shout it out? I know we have that. Maybe there's some things in here that God would re- have you be reminded of what you have victory in. Romans 5, 17 says this. The sin of one man, Adam, caused death to rule over us. But all who receive God's wonderful, gracious gift of righteousness will live in triumph. That's conquered, by the way. A conquering over sin and death and through his, this one man, Jesus Christ. Romans 6.10 says, when Christ died, he died to defeat the power of sin one time, enough for all time. The power of sin. Now, what does that mean, Pastor? You might ask. <laughs> when you invite Christ into your life, okay, when you say yes to what he offers you, you acknowledge who he was and you say, yes, I believe in my heart that you are Lord, I profess with my mouth, and you're saved, what happens, a new power comes in. Do you stop doing bad things? Did, did, when you all, how many of y'all have given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? Quite a few of you, right? 
Did you all stop messing up? What's in? T- are you going to the wrong church, man? No. None of us. It, what it does is it changes the, the source. It changes you were the, the power that had you gripped and stuck in, in these hurts, habits, and hang-ups, these life patterns, these things of, of, of he, you don't have that anymore. God comes in and breaks those chains, and he says, I'm giving you a new holy power, a supernatural power, an ability beyond. You don't have to sin anymore. Now, you can choose to, but you don't have to. Before, you couldn't help yourself. Now, you can. Look to your neighbor and say, I can help myself. You better help you. No, let's check yourself. Anyway, you don't have to keep sinning. You don't have to. You have a choice. Because he... Hmm. It's okay. I want us to do something a little crazy. Y'all ready? Okay, got an hour's worth or 20 minutes worth? Okay, just kind of dialing you back in here. Nudge your neighbor. If they're snoring, I'm gonna, it counts negative. Okay, we want to pause over I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to do something. I'm going to read some things and some statements. And if it's something you've got victory over or you want victory from or you know somebody that you love dearly that needs victory, then I want you to just stand and act like God just scored a touchdown. You know, and say, Tetelestai, it is finished. I have the victory. I know I, some of y'all need to unfasten your seatbelt and take your halo and just loosen it a half a turn, just, just a half, and keep it on there. But loosen up, we're going to do something a little crazy. I just get curious what might happen, all right? It might be that I get notes in my email on Monday. But I believe celebrating the Lord, even without music, but celebrating from what he has done, what he promises to do, what I yearn for, I believe we can get excited about it. Amen? So again, you've had victory. You want victory. You know somebody needs victory in these areas. I want you to jump to your feet just like somebody scored. Somebody just called you up and said, Visa bill are paid. Your Hoff's mortgage is paid. Whatever the victory is, okay, we're going to act like you just got an excited. What's the, the, think of the best thing, and that's what's happened, all right? So here's the context. Jesus breaks. Jesus has victory over the power of sin, right? We all agree with that? Amen? Amen. He has the power over bad habits. All right. He has the power over addiction. He has the power over life patterns. He has the power over your mind and memories. He has the power over your hurts. He has the power over strongholds. He has the power over health. He has the power over the lost and the dying. He has the power over us. Now look around. That's how it should be. Amen. You can stay stated. We can just keep, we can finish this way, right like this if you want to. Folks, that's how we need to take the court on Monday. Don't be dreading Monday. (laughs) I get to go into those people. (laughs) You know, you're going to to tell us die. (laughs) Performance appraisal, (laughs) to tell us die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why not? What's the worst thing can happen? Jesus has to bail you out, do something gracious and blessing. Or, you know, I don't know, favor might fall on you or something. You're trusting in Jesus. Who knows? I love this. Hebrews 2, chapter 2, verse 14. Jesus became flesh and blood by being born in human form, for only as a human could, be, could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who has had power of death. Only in this way could he deliver those who had lived all their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. You know, many of you have been baptized. And I tell people, if if I had the privilege of doing it, that you get to be part of sharing the loudest 
sermon, the loudest presentation of the gospel without words when you allow yourself to be baptized. But I wanted to dial in here. When we're talking about Christ was crucified, dead, and buried, okay, we know that story. We're getting ready in two weeks to not only have Good Friday, which is when our debt was paid, but Sunday when the tomb was opened up and he was raised. Romans 6, 4 says this, our baptism, or by our baptism, we are buried with him and share in his death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glorious power of the Father, so also we might live a new life. So when we talk and, and, and what, why we baptize the way we do is we do it the way Jesus and really most of anything in the Bible, if you get stay back in the uh, before modern day, baptism meant underwater. Baptism was always a symbol of death because you were being put under. And so there's this symbol of dying, putting them underwater. So it's, it's like a burial. So what we typically say to a person, we do it like Jesus did it. It says that we take them and, and we say, buried with Christ. Now we put them underwater, right? Right? He was in the tomb for three days, so we leave him down there for three days. And after that, we raise them for newness of life. If they're alive, then they're Christian. If not, they have to... We perform, we have a memorial service, but anyway. No, but we, it is a picture of buried with Christ, raised to walk in, in newness of life. It's a beautiful picture. It, 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 it is our battle cry, folks, if you're a Christian. I want you to change this whole thing. It's not about wet, all right? It's your battle cry. It's your visible battle cry of the victory God has in your life. Folks, you need to be stamping up if you haven't been baptized and say, hey, I want to let the, I want to shout out my battle cry of what God's done in my life. And if you go, well, I don't have a battle cry yet. I don't have victory. Then let's fix that today. All you got to do is where you're sitting or it doesn't matter how you do it. You just profess, acknowledge, ask for him to save you. This Easter... This Resurrection Sunday, which is two weeks away, we're going to offer baptism. Anybody wants to be baptized? Now, why in the world we don't on Easter? Easter because it's such a big day, and there's people, and there's fancy clothes, and it's hard to get in and out of. And don't you have special music? And won't it be a full plate? Yes! But do you know why I wanted to do it? It's because it's every Easter that you come to church any other time in your life. If you get baptized on Easter, it's not going to be hard to you to forget or, or remember the date and time. You say, hey, it's Easter. To tell us die, my victory chant. I, got, I, I am saved by the one true God. I was baptized on Easter. Resurrection morning, because why? I'm raised to walk a new life. I got a new life. So I'm going to challenge you if you haven't been baptized or maybe you just want to do it again because something's changed in you. Have a victory chant. The last thing we'll in your fill-in. And it's connected to this victory thing, remember? Over sin and death, but over the devil. He defeated the devil. He defeated darkness. He defeated Satan. Fill in that blank. He defeated what was not a God. It is finished. I believe before then, Satan and some of his little minions kind of thought, we did it. We did it. Until they heard those words. And I think they, some of them went, uh-oh. Anybody, everybody, what does that mean, uh-oh? You know, it's one of those words you never want to hear a surgeon say. Yeah. Oops. Oops. And then when he raised three days later and he was alive, there was no doubt in their mind, we're cooked, we're done, it's over. We just got a little bit of time left just to do what we do, but man, it's done, it's over, it's finished, it's telestai, the telestai. Colossians 2.15 says, God took away Satan's power. Hmm. <laughs> Whether it manifests in your body in sickness, whether it's just torment at night in unrestful sleep, no matter what it is, he took the power away from Satan. And he, opened, he openly displayed the whole world. Christ triumphed at the cross where your sins were all taken away. Colossians 1.13, God has freed us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom 
of his dear son. What is finished on the cross? He fulfilled the scripture. He satisfied the law. He paid my penalty. He conquered sin and death. He took the fear of dying away because I know where, whose I am and where I'm headed. He defeated the devil that God's my Savior. What God did and what the Savior did, you can be secured in your eternity if you trust him. There's a big if in there. You've got to trust him. You've got to say, I want you to become the central of my life, the center. I want you to become the CEO, the managing director. I want to shift and put me over here in the, in the side seat and give you the steering wheel. That's the follow-through. It doesn't start there. It starts by just saying yes. Jesus plus nothing equals salvation. The rest of it comes as we walk with him and talk with him along life's way. Hmm. And then we're to go out and finish the mission. Spurgeon did a sermon, famous pastor. The sermon's title was The Unfinished Work of Every Christian. Getting saved isn't where it stops, it's where it starts. Giving your heart to Christ and becoming filled with the Spirit opens up a new beginning. Acts chapter 20, verse 24, Paul is talking about the unfinished work. What is that unfinished work? It's telling others of what Jesus has done. It's what Vicki did. It's what, it's what we do when we just talk about him. It says, I only want to complete my mission and finish. I want to, to tell us die my life. I want to be able to say, it is done, it is finished for what God's called me to, the work of the Lord Jesus gave me to do, which is to declare the good news about what? The grace of God. I'm going to close on this note. It's not, now I'm glad when we as a body of believers called Community Church do things that look like Christ. That's cool. But I want you talking about him more than you're talking about our pews and our programs. I want you to find Christ in the nursery and in the youth program. I want you to find Christ on Wednesday night Bible studies and CR studies. I want you to find Christ doing something in the hearts of lives of people, and especially yours. I want that to be what you're going out to work, not, hey, we got a chili cook-off, you want to buy a raffle ticket. I want us to be talking about what God did in our heart, what he saved you from, what he's given you life for, and that's what I want to be on the streets of Guthrie. If I could ask that for you all, because you know why? You tell them about programs and, 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 and pews, that's not eternal. You get over here and start talking about the power of God, the resurrected Savior, and what he's doing in you and through you, Woo! that's contagious. So let's all stand. We're going to close now. Everybody stand up. Team, we're about to take the field. You've been in the locker room. Well, you've been in the locker room. You know, we've had a good game day. We've looked at some tapes. We've looked at the playbook. You know what? Now it's time to take the court. You're going to take the field. I just want to give you a hoorah, hoorah, amen, to tell us die. We're going to have victory out there, amen. How many of you going to have victory out here? How many are going to approach Monday differently? Some of you are like, well, not really. <laughs> nah, it was really good, Pastor, but, you know, you're going to be done in just about eight minutes, and uh, so are we. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Man, it's going to be cool. Do you know what? God is stirring some things up, folks. And we can either be on the outside of the pool or we can get in the water. You're in the water whether you know or not. You're going to have to make yourself get out. And you're like, well, that, that sure is feeling odd. I don't, I've not done a church like that. Two offerings? Good night. What's the deal here? Because we want to finish well. Amen. But this is the training center. This is the equipping center. This is where you hopefully can get encouraged. But this isn't the church. You're the church and the mission's out there. Amen? So that's why the analogy, you've been in the locker room, you're the team, you know, we're not going to do kumbaya, kumbaya on the way out. We're going to go, yeah, we're going to get them, yeah, huh, yeah, huh, yeah, huh. Thunder up. All right, grab a hand, part of the team. Everybody's got a role. Don't measure yourself on the person you've grabbed a hand to hold of or anybody you've seen on TV or listened to. There are great ministers out there, but God's called you to be 
part of the body of Christ, to be who you're to be, allowing his power, his strength, his definition to flow through you. That's what's going to change your world. Did you know that? Look at the person next to you and say, you're a world changer. Just tell them that. You're a world changer through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, now as we get ready to leave, God, we go in your strength. We go in your might. For without you, we're nothing. But God, you've called us into battle. You've called us to a victory chant of to tell us die because you went to the cross for us. You took my blows. You took my penalty. You've set me free. And now I'm going to take the field and tell folks about it. Now tell somebody you love them and you're dismissed. God bless y'all. Amen. Because he lives, I can face to